Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna try to tackle a very popular question at the start of FIFA every single year as we're opening packs, starting our FIFA Ultimate Team. We're getting these players and we're like, hey, should I sell these? or should I keep these for potential price rises later on? Especially with the crazy year that we had last year in FIFA 22 where so many people lost coins at the start of the game and it was very demoralizing. I wanna take you through how this year we can stay ahead of the curve a little bit and not lose as many coins. Even though this year's market's gonna have its own weird parts, its own new kind of things we're gonna have to figure out about it. I think last year's market is gonna be pretty similar to this year because of the big changes that happened last year and still how those things are implemented in FIFA 23. So we're gonna take a look at that today and kind of tell you which cards you might be able to hold on to and which ones you're gonna to wanna to get out as soon as possible or at a specific date and time when we feel like the market might be its highest in the early stages of the game. So if you're excited for today's upload, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's get right into it. And first ask the question, why do we even need to talk about this? Well, again, as I mentioned, you guys probably remember it. At the beginning of FIFA 22, prices dropped like crazy. And as we head into the web app, into the EA early access and getting onto FIFA 23, People are going to be worried about the same thing. They're not going to want to lose coins like last year in the early stages. Who remembers St. Juice Day at 30,000 coins and then a, a week and a half later, he was 5K. Who remembers Pepe's center back card being 8,000 coins and then a week and a half later being 1,000 coins? The same stuff is going to happen this year in FIFA 23. It's just going to be with different cards because every single year, new cards get upgrades and people build different starter teams. And that's what I want to start by talking about today is what players you should sell. And I really think that with the way the web app and the early game this year is shaping up, there's gonna be a lot more selling to be done than holding for seriously like 90% of cards on this market. Here's one that I wanna talk about first, this Timber card, man. He's from the Air Divisie. Yes, he looks really good. He's got a great alternate position at right back, very versatile for squad building. This guy's in so many different starter squads. Same thing with like Malasia, the man you left back, the new transfer, right? Those guys are in so many starter squads. That to me means that they are going to get sold off like crazy. It's giving me Pepe and St. Juice Day vibes from last year because everybody had these guys in their starting squads. They went out and bought them right away to start playing the game with them. And then they were just upgrading from those cards super duper fast because it was decently easy to get coins. And at the same time, the supply last year was so crazy and the pack weight was so good that these guys being 80... 82 and 76 rated just got slammed with pack supply and their prices died. I'm worried about this timber card. He might start off being five to six, seven thousand coins, a pretty cheap starter card. But after the first two weeks, I really think he could be the same thing as Pepe last year, down to a thousand or two thousand coins. And you're like, Nate, does this really matter if I'm going to lose 3K on a card over the course of a week? Uh, yeah, it does because if you multiply that by all 11 players in your team, you're gonna be hurting and you're gonna to have to play a lot of games or really trade to try to recoup those coins. So staying ahead of the curve this year is gonna be more crucial than ever. What other types of cards do you wanna sell in the early game? Again, like I said, it all is based around the low rated cards because those are the cards that get packed the most. I'm a little scared about Renato Sanchez. Remember last year, I was even part of this. Last year, I thought Renato Sanchez being extinct at 27K with how crazy his card looked and how more expensive he could have been. I thought he was going to go to 40,000 coins as is, did a lot of people did, but instead he went from 27K all the way down to 10K in the course of a week just because of that supply and people were upgrading from a Renato Sanchez 80 rated to better cards in their squads. Same thing happened with Alan St. Maximin last year, right? He was 20K, had a spike to 28, and then boom, a couple weeks later, he's down to 9,000 coins. Even though he's such a great card, people progress through their squads and upgrade their teams faster than ever, especially with the market these days, and especially last year in FIFA 22, being so much cheaper. So those are some examples of cards that I would say be very careful holding on to. And as we look through a lot of cards today, 
really, really be careful about how long you're holding onto any card. What we learned, one of the biggest things that I learned in FIFA 22 on the market was don't hold on to any card for very long unless it's like a live upgrading card, like a road to the final or a ones to watch. Even some of those don't maintain their prices very well. These gold cards are going to drop off in price super fast this year because we're going to have promos. We're going to have SBCs of cards that will replace them and it will be able to upgrade to over these early game and even cards that are still really good like Renato people are going to get past this and upgrade to something better in a couple of weeks time so here's what I have to say for a specific sell sell time because if you take a look at this Alan St. Maximum card you might be like Nate you know if I sold here at 20k I could have held for two days longer maybe played a couple games and sold it for 28 why did the market go up like that last year well last year there was a bunch of selling as people were really scared about the 4600 FIFA points that drop on the ultimate edition release date so people sold like crazy and then of course people open those FIFA points they get coins in their account and then they go out and they buy cards off of the market and build some bigger and better teams right now this year What's really interesting is the schedule is different, and this is something that's different about FIFA 23, is that we have a very long web app period, like we've talked about, but nobody can play the game until the 27th. And on the 27th, we get those FIFA points for those that open the Ultimate Edition in our accounts. So on that 27th date, there's going to be a lot of people opening packs and getting cards in packs like St. Maximin's 81 rated card, pretty packable, like Renato Sanchez's 80 rated card, pretty packable so these cards could potentially drop they could potentially go up a little bit depending on the demand but seriously this this year at the start of the year is going to be different than last year in the fact that i don't know if you're going to have this like drop and then a bounce it might just be low 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 a little bit of a bounce and then they're going to die especially if there are fifa points that are on the web app for the first time ever this could be possible it's not confirmed yet we still don't have any pitch notes from ea sports Come on, EA, give us some communication. We would love to see that. But I just feel like there could be even more supply in the first couple weeks on the web app if there are FIFA points out there on some of these cards that are low rated, and that worries me. So if I had to tell you a sell time for a lot of these cards, if it's a player like a Timber, if you want to buy this guy for your starter team, I would say... I would not buy him until the 4,600 FIFA points come out and you see his price dropping because, again, this is a card that's starter teams on the 27th when people are getting onto the game for the first time, they're going to look a lot different than when people start the web app because people are going to get more coins and they're going to be able to upgrade and play with better players than a guy like a Timber or, like last year, a Pepe, right? So I think that guys like Renato and guys like Alan St. Maxman could have a bit of a bounce in price just because they'll be a little bit more meta and desirable so i do think that that 27th date this year it's the same day this year the 27th when the ultimate edition drops for maybe a day or two after that we could see a slight spike on the market on some of the most meta lower tier cards but i would look to get out of those guys pretty fast i i even think of some popular players right like let's think of some cards that are on the popular players list here that are in the lower rated category Luis Diaz you know there's a lot of left wings in the Premier League that are pretty solid that you would want to be careful with he's lower rated I'd want to be careful with him Zakaria would be a card I would not want to hold on to for very long after the 27th McKenny would be a card that's going to be pretty cheap I would not want to hold on to him even a guy like Tonali being in the Serie A he might be 20,000 coins he might go up to 25k but he's going to be 10,000 coins or less a week after the full game drops, uh, you know, for everybody. So again, that's why I would say just be careful with these cards, especially your starter card ones like the Malasia that I mentioned, the Martinelli, even like Muriel. He's not going to be that expensive anyway. Um, you know, Timber, as I mentioned, Lacroix this year for sure, just like last year, St. Juice Day this year, just like last year. Be very, very careful with those starter cards because they're going to have a lot of graphs that just look like this. So sell those in the early game basically as soon as possible. And what you can do then is try to upgrade to some of the cards that could be increasing in value after the 4,600 FIFA points drop. Because on that on that Tuesday, the 27th, when those FIFA points drop, that's when things are going to kind of turn around and the switch is going to flip and there's actually going to be gameplay demand. And like we looked at last year, I can look at fo uh, footprint prices now because earlier yesterday they were not working this is a card that sticks out in my mind as a card that had a really nice price rise last year in the early stage we're going to zoom all the way back in time to october and september of 2021 
on that date, the 4,600 FIFA points drop, right? You have those low tier cards like the Renato, like the Pepe last year, and like the Timber and the Malasia this year that are going to get supplied and they're probably going to go down in price. What you have on the other side of that is people that are selling those cards and they're done with their starter teams, they go out with more coins and they upgrade and they get bigger and better players, higher rated, more rare. And a guy like Sterling goes from 56K, the 4,600 FIFA points drop, and he goes all the way up to 75,000 coins in literally three days. From Sunday to Wednesday, he goes up 20,000 coins and hits a peak before we get into the full game release on that Friday, October 1st last year. This year, it's the September 30th. So that's, again, a time frame for a lot of those low-tier cards. Sell them before Friday for sure because once the full game gets released, they're going to go down even more. But for cards that you might want to hold, let's say you packed uh, Sterling, right? Let's say you packed Sterling on day one, 20,000 coins. Yeah, you're holding that card. He's worth way more than 20,000 coins at the beginning of the game, right? Of course, he goes up to 50K. He goes up to 75,000 coins. This time right here, the couple days before the full worldwide launch and ones to watch team one being out in packs on the 30th of September, I think you're going to see a high point on the market this year as well because people are going to get those 4,600 FIFA points. They're going to go out, buy players maybe like Nkunku, maybe like Vinny's gold card, or you know some of these other players, like maybe even some heroes, right? These cards are the ones that are going to go up uh, unless it's a really big time hero like a Ginola like this. I would continue to hold a card like that or an Mbappe. We'll talk more about that in a second. But some of these other middle to low tier cards, like even Raheem Sterling this year, there's a lot of other great left mids that are left wings that are in the game. His card does look very good, but I would sell a card like this in between the early access launch date and the full release. But again, what kind of cards are we looking to hold, right? We talked about sell. Let's talk about hold because if you pack a Raheem Sterling day one, like we looked at in last year's graph, he was registering at 20,000 coins. You don't want to sell a card like this at 20,000 coins. And if you pack a guy day one and you're like, Nate, what in the world is this guy going to cost? Come in the Twitch stream, ask me, or go on Footbin and look and see how much the guy's card costed last year. Of course, there's guys that change in rating and price and stuff like that. And that changes, but your meta cards, that's the best way to say it. You guys know what is meta, the pace, the higher rated items, that sort of stuff are the cards that you're going to want to hold. Let me just shout out some quick names that you would want to hold. Genman Sun will be a card 100% to hold. I would hold Diogo Jota, still a pretty hyped up card. People would be upgrading to him and buying him to upgrade from whatever they had before, not downgrading, right? Goretzka, definitely a card that you would hold. Van Dyke, a hold. Cancelo, a hold. Mane, Koulibaly. Um, let's see, Varane would be a hold in my opinion. Benzema, Hakimi, Salah, Delict, Militao, Llorente, Bernardo Silva, th those Valverde, those would all be your more meta, higher rated, and cards that people are not buying right away. Most people are not. It's taking them a couple days to get enough coins to save up and to get packs to buy those cards and upgrade their team. So you want to sell those when those guys are going out and buying their teams after they've opened their 4,600 FIFA points and stuff like that if you pack them early on, like it could make the whole difference of you selling in Cuckoo in the first day or two of the game. If you pack him, he might be like 150,000 coins. But then if you wait and hold on to him for three, four, five days, he might end up being 200, 250,000 coins. You haven't even been able to play a single game yet. And you just made 100,000 coins off of waiting to sell your card that you packed. That's the sort of thing and the sort of scenario that we're looking at here with the high tier meta cards. But again, like I said in the beginning, the high tier meta is just this much of the game's cards, right? And everybody, after they get their, their coins, they're chasing after the this much of players in the game. Like the top, let's lower that percentage a bit. The top 75% or the top 25% of cards are what people are going to be shooting for. The higher rated, that's what they're going to be upgrading to, right? So if it's if it's an inform card, I haven't even spoken about informs yet. Everybody looks back at this card from last year and remembers. 83 rated Vinny Jr., 158,000 coins, right? Those 4,600 FIFA points come out, he shoots up to 200K. He is a rare card, goes out of packs, and is very meta, very overpowered, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. The only types of card cards that you want to hold for longer than like two or three weeks Basically, for any card type in this year's game, would be a very early on inform card, a hero, 
or an icon. Those would be the only three types of cards that I would say it would be a hold for longer than a couple of weeks at a time from the start of FIFA 23 going forward. If you're lucky enough to pack a card like, you know, in this year's Team of the Week 1, we're expected to get a Hyunmin Sun Inform card, right? If you pack Hyunmin Sun's Inform card, if he gets one on Wednesday, if they drop a Team of the Week on Wednesday as well, still a little bit in the balance there, wish EA would communicate with us again, right? Second time we've mentioned that in this video. But let's say you pack uh, Inform Hyunmin Sun. That's a card I would 1000% hold uh, because that just brings, you know, more people get more coins, people go out and upgrade their teams, and they will be looking to buy that card as we go on through the first two, three, four weeks of the game. That card will most likely be rising for the whole time. So that's kind of what I would say. It, again, not very many people is that going to happen to. For most people, what you're going to encounter is you're, you're going to pack the cards like the Renato. You're going to pack the cards like the Alan St. Maximin. Or again, as we look down through this list, you know, guys like Fakir, guys like Dybala. I mean, even if we take a look at a, at a mid-range card like Dybala from last year, at, even as I mentioned, you don't want to hold on to these guys, that the ones that we're labeling as a hold, you don't want to even hold on to them for too long. Let's take a look at Dybala's price up until Black Friday. Dybala was 29k. He spiked to 39. And what do we talk about with Sterling? Same thing with Dybala. Those mid-tier meta cards, sell those before the full game release. Unless it's the most meta tier, those are the ones that you want to hold on until after the release. But the mid-tier metas, 40,000 coins, and then boom. He goes to 30k the next week. He goes down to 20k. And the week after that, this dude's 15,000 coins before you know it. Three weeks later from the beginning of the game when he was 40,000 coins on the game, right? That's the kind of stuff you just don't want to hold cards for that long, even if they are pretty meta. And I know that's a decent amount of time. You're like, Nate, by the time I get to here, I'm going to want to upgrade my card. That's exactly the point of why his price goes down. More promos than ever, more content than ever. It's going to happen again this year in FIFA 23. So you just have to be careful with some of those cards. Now, heroes, I want to talk about just slightly for a second. They're one of those cards that are in the longer hold category as well, especially with more heroes this year. I have to say, I think heroes are more, more uh, hyped up than icons on some aspects this year. Look at Ginola. Ginola was extinct. They update his price. He goes to 1.6 mil. And then by the time we get close to Black Friday, he, this guy's 2.2 million coins. That was his peak price for the rest of the year. Then he started dropping, of course, in that second half. But with, you know, I think of heroes like, like the Yaya Toure card. Now, one thing I have to mention is this Yaya Toure, if you did not know, is not going to be in packs from the start of the game. Yaya Toure will have a different card that will be this card design, a regular base hero item. Again, EA, give us communication on this. We didn't know. We, we Unless you read the fine print, most people don't know this. Like, Yaya Toure is not going to have this card in the game come uh, Friday, September 30th, when heroes should be released and in packs. So these cards are all, if you pack a hero, unless it's like Peter Crouch, just hold on to it and use it in your team and enjoy the card for at least a couple of weeks because they're going to maintain their price really well as people want to go out and use them, especially the brand new ones. Same thing with icons. So that's kind of a very rare thing, but you know, people are going to pack heroes and icons. They're going to get lucky. It's going to happen. And for the rest of us that don't, uh, you know, you are thinking of me like, Nate, you packed 94 or nine last year. You can't talk. Okay. Yes, you're right. Uh, you know, for those of us that don't, the ones that we'll be looking out for, again, it's even a time where we can invest. We'll be looking at some of those meta cards, the mid metas like the Sterling, like the Dybala, uh, like maybe an Anthony this year, who also has the potential to be out of packs as a ones to watch card. That's something else to think about. We're going to think about investments in this early time of the game as well as we get on the web app tomorrow, which is crazy to think about it's tomorrow, man. It's settling in. Tomorrow is the web app. Let's freaking go. You know, we have to start thinking about that sort of thing too. So we're going to be covering the market every single day, especially as the web app starts and as this craziness begins, we are going to be on the web app. We're going to be making coins. We're going to be trading and we're going to be watching prices for all these players using Footbin, using our minds, using our transfer list, transfer targets, whatever it may be. We're going to be scouting the market a lot, making some money moves and kind of walking through how you need to navigate the market in the early days of FIFA 23. So hopefully today's video helped you a little bit with the knowledge of should I keep, should I sell in the early game stage, general life advice, general FIFA life advice, it's not life advice, it's FIFA advice, don't hold cards for very long because they will die in price. And I think a lot of you guys, if you just listen to that, will not lose near as many coins last this year as we did last year. 
because last year was just crazy. But this year, we're smarter, we know, and we're gonna move forward, and we're not gonna lose as many coins because of that. We're gonna be better economy monitoring the FIFA 23 market. So if you enjoyed this video today, smash a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.